Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith and I am a physical therapist. I got my doctorate in physical therapy about five years ago. But today's video is something that is very dear to my heart and it's something that I feel like we need to talk about and we need to talk about it more often and we need to be more aware and not put it in the corner. I feel like the way in which we are now talking about having preemies and we're not talking about miscarriages, we also need to talk about breast cancer. We need to talk about it to where we are always thinking about it. Now, I don't want you to stop living your life because you're constantly worried about getting breast cancer. No, I want for you to think about it to whenever you're in the shower and you're washing under your armpits or you're washing your boobs, you just take a little bit more time just to feel around that area a little bit more. So that is the goal. So before we get into this video, before I get into my story, I just want to share a few things with you guys. Excuse me. So first off, breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer in women. The first one is skin cancer. And also, 11% of those women who get diagnosed with cancer in the U.S. are women who are younger than age 45. So that's where I fall in, is that 11% of those people who do get cancer are in my age group. And also, black women and white women are both diagnosed with breast cancer at an equal rate. However, black women are 40% more likely to die from breast cancer than white women are. So I don't know if it is because we just don't say things when it comes up or if it's because we are too busy taking care of everybody else versus taking care of ourselves of, or if it is just because we just don't take things as seriously or if we are just not getting the right referrals or if we don't have the insurance or if we don't have the money I don't know what it is but either way 40% is a lot that is a large number in women who are younger than 45 years old when they get breast cancer that cancer is very aggressive like it is more likely to kill you than it is with a woman who is much older let's get into why i even decided to make this video why am i even having this conversation so this story started back when i was at work it was just a regular day at work and i'm sitting at the computer doing some documentations and all of a sudden i, st I started to feel some tingling sensation in my breast so I'm like, okay, this is weird. It felt as if I had to feed a baby. And I'm like, I'm not pregnant. I am not breastfeeding. Why am I having this sensation in my breast? So I took it and I just banked it in my brain because I'm at work and I'm trying to do my stuff. So a few days later, I'm at work again and I'm typing again and the same thing happened. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. Okay, body, I hear you. I'm going to pay attention to you. So I came home from work that day and I told my husband about it. I was like, I need you to do a breast exam on me. So he did a breast exam on me. He was like, well, one of your boobs does feel a little different. It feels a little lumpy. So I'm like, okay. I called my GYN the next day and I made an appointment I went in to see him luckily I was able to get to, I was able to get in there to see him in like for like three days it was really quick so I got there the first thing I did they wanted to do a pregnancy test we did a pregnancy test I was not pregnant he was like okay let's talk about breast cancer so we started talking about it and he asked me if I have a family history of breast cancer I say yes my mom had breast cancer before she was 40 years old. So he was like, okay, is there any other cancer in your family? I told him, yes. I have aunts who have had uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, kidney cancer, lung cancer. So like 
on both sides of my family there's just cancer floating all over the place and I'm sure in today's society with the way in which cancer is one in three individuals who get cancer so I'm sure in a lot of families there are a lot of cancers so I told him all of that and he was like all right we are gonna schedule you for a mammogram moving forward you need to have a mammogram every year now Normally, insurance don't cover mammograms until maybe you're older than 40. I think that's when they start to cover it. Either 40 or 45, but I think it's 40. And when you have a family history of someone close, like your mom or your dad or your sister or someone really, really close in your intimate family that have had breast cancer before they were 40, you should be getting a mammogram every year from the time you turn 30. So, when I went for my appointment, I learned this information. I was like, okay. So, he scheduled me for a mammogram. And then he also referred me to go and see a genetic specialist. So, after my... GYN appointment, I got a mammogram schedule. It was probably like a few weeks after and I got the, the mammogram schedule. So after my GYN appointment, I went and I got my mammogram done. And honestly, that mammogram was very, very scary. It's just one of those things where when you are going to do a test that could potentially change your life forever, it is very, very scary. It is so stressful. It was my husband and I who went to the appointment, so that was very helpful to have him there. However, nonetheless, it was still very, very scary for me. After the mammogram, the radiologist came in and she said, well, your breast is very dense, so the, your breast tissue is very dense, so we really could not see inside of that tissue we could see around the tissue and around the tissue looks good and then I had to remind her like okay my mom had breast cancer before she was 40 and then she was like well in that case because you're having a tingling sensation we need to send you for an MRI so I left that appointment she was going to send me to another site to get an MRI done their concern was that my insurance was not going to cover it because of my age and also because I just got a mammogram done and it was just a whole bunch of mess. You know, everything always comes down to insurance. I wish insurance could just agree to play ball and we will all just be happy playing balls around here. I never got the appointment to get the MRI done because everything with COVID happened and after that, yeah, it just never happened. So I got on the appointment with the genetic specialist we had a great conversation he ordered a test for me to do some genetic testing and I'm gonna show you guys what the test look like because I bugged these people so much to get the test to get the referral for my MRI to get another appointment set up with a genetic specialist to get the results of the test that I ended up getting two two tests in the mail because of how many times I had to call them just to get things moving. After the appointment with the genetic specialist, I was supposed to have received a test in the mail within a few days. That was back in August. That test never showed up until October. I lost count of the number of times that I had to call the office. I called them almost every single week sometimes twice a week sometimes three times a week and every single time you will call they will always say the same thing we are gonna message the provider and see why you have not yet returned why you have not yet received your test and we will call you back never never got a call back I always had to keep on calling until finally I called and then I showed up and when I showed up that was when my test got ordered so, I got the test in the mail. I'm going to show you guys what the test look like right now. So, this is the second one that I said came in. I actually called the company earlier today just to make sure that I did not have to return this in. Because I'm sure this test is very, very expensive. 
and they told me that I did not have to return it in. So this is a saliva collection kit. And basically it's pretty simple. It comes with an instruction card and it comes with like the little kit that has everything in it. Inside of this box you also have like your mill, your envelope that you get to put the test in after you are done. So basically the there's like a little bottle in there that you put your saliva in. There's a fluid in the lid in the top part of the bottle where when you close it, it kind of seals it off to keep it from going, from growing bacteria and stuff like that. And then you just have to close it nice and tight, put it in a sample bag in here. Put it in a sample bag in here. And then there's also an envelope in here too for you to mail it. And everything is already paid for, so you don't have to do anything. It's really easy. The only thing with the test is that you cannot eat 30 minutes before you take the test. You cannot brush your teeth 30 minutes before you, took, before you take this test. I have a video of me that I recorded when I was taking the test, so I may or may not insert it in this video because it might just be too long. So, anyway, after the test, I had to call the office the company sent me a message immediately when they received the test and when they processed the test and also they sent me a message when the results were in so i called the provider the genetic specialist and i told i told them that i needed an appointment in order to go over the test results because i cannot get it the provider has to provide it to me and we have an appointment set up for sometime in december so so far, I still have yet to get my MRI done. The genetic specialist was going to refer me to another provider who could help me do get the MRI done, so I'm still waiting on that. I do have another mammogram coming up because it's about to be a year since I got the first one done. It's crazy to think that a year just flies by so fast. But yeah, it's about to be a year since I got the first one done. But one of the main things that I want for anyone who's listening to this to take away from it is that when it comes down to your body and when it comes down to your health, you have to make it a priority. You have to advocate for yourself. You have to speak up. If something is not happening, if you notice something in your body, you have to make sure that you're reaching out to the right people. Bug the crap out of your doctor. I kid you not. The people at that genetic clinic, they know my first name. When I call, they recognize my voice. They're like, hi, Faith. I'm like, yep, I'm calling again. I need this appointment. I need this referral. Like, yes, I do not have cancer. Thank God. I'm praying that I can keep it that way. Or if, God forbid, it happens because one in three people will probably get it. So if God forbid, if I'm one of those people who do, I would like to catch it at an early stage. So that way I can still be with my family. And I feel like that's where a lot of us African-American women are probably dropping the ball is that we are not pushing for these things. We are not like if you have a family history of cancer within your immediate family, your mom, your aunt, your sister, your cousin, like tell that to your GYN. Let them refer you to a genetic specialist. Get the test done. It's so easy. A lot of times to say insurance does not cover it. My insurance cover it. And even when they don't, the test is not that expensive. So definitely speak up. Like go talk to your providers don't just stay home and think that it will go away and I feel like sometimes that what we do we tend to ignore things hoping that it gets better on its own but cancer is not one of those things that gets better on its own if you don't pay attention to it it is gonna get worse and I am not speaking from a place of experience I am speaking from a place of education because I don't have experience with it I thank God I have not had cancer However, I would just like to see less women dying from cancer. That's it. And I feel like it's something 
that we should all talk about. The more people that talk about it, the more people will be open to going to their providers and really understanding and listening to their bodies. So I really hope that this video helps you in any way, shape or form. Like if there's some aches in your body, if there's something that just does not make sense because we always have a gut feeling about things, but we just tend to ignore it sometimes. Something does not make sense. The same way you would rush to the doctor if it was your kid, do the same thing for you, okay? Do the same thing for you. You deserve to be taken care of. You deserve to put yourself first. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.